Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and in this episode, we're going to look at how to paint aircraft. I love tanks. Turning a small piece of plastic into something as massive and imposing as a tank? Mmm. Adding weathering in the form of dirt and dust is a challenge I enjoy. And don't get me started on chipping and battle damage. Putting layer after layer of color down. Dry brushing on rivets. Oh yeah. And there's nothing quite as satisfying as watching the enamel wash pool between plates of armor. But then you have to paint a stupid plane. Aircraft are cool. The technology is awesome. However, as far as painting models go, they just don't speak to me. You see, unfortunately, aircraft have a thing going against them. They just aren't tanks. Unsurprisingly, then, my method for painting planes is kind of a trade-off. I try to balance speed with detail so that the model looks good on the table, but it won't win you any awards. So in this video, I'd like to show you how I paint my aircraft, and I hope it gives you some ideas to help with your own model painting game. I'm going to demonstrate on these SU-25 frog foot, frog feet, I don't know, on these SU-25s by Battlefront. They're excellent models, and like all their aircraft, they're in 1 44th scale. So we start by assembling them, and uh, then I prime them black. Once the primer has dried, I go back and I start spraying earth yellow on the model and I try to keep it heavier on the upper surfaces where the light hits the model more directly and a little more sparse in the recesses to let the shadows show through. Now I apply a layer of UK light stone and I focus more towards the edges on the model. Now I apply Vallejo sand as a highlight with my airbrush and I focus on the wing tips and the leading edges of the wings anywhere that's just at the very edge of the model which would collect the most light. It's now time to mask the model so I do an old model builders trick and I get out some silly putty and I press it down on the model to cover up the spots I don't want to get camouflage paint on. Grabbing my airbrush I start applying brown paint between the areas I've masked off. You should go at this lightly, building up the shades of camouflage and layers. Don't try to spray it all at once. If you get runs in the paint, it could really do some damage by leaking underneath your mask. When the camouflage layers are dry, I then go ahead and reveal the camouflage pattern by peeling off the silly putty. And you can keep the silly putty and reuse it should you want it. To do the underside of the plane, I repeat the process, only this time I mask it off with masking tape, being careful to try to keep it straight and even around the sides. Then I flip the model over, and taking light gray paint in my airbrush, I give a light coating over the bottom of the plane. I don't get too worried about this, and I let the shadows show through, because the underside of the plane won't be terribly obvious on the gaming table. Now it's time to apply the decals, and I won't get into the details too specifically here. I have a separate video on the subject, but first I prepare the surface by putting down a layer of gloss varnish. And while that dries, I soak the decals to apply them, and then I slide them onto the model using a dry paintbrush. At this point, I need to start preparing for shading. And since I've decided to use enamels on this model, I need to put down a layer of satin varnish first 
to protect the previous acrylic paints. So I go ahead and spray that on. Now comes the enamel wash. And since I'm trying to balance speed against detail, I decide to do a speedy enamel wash. So first I paint over the whole vehicle in a light coating of enamel thinner, and then I go ahead and just brush the enamel over the top of the whole model. I give it about five minutes for the enamel to set, and then taking a flat brush and some fresh thinner, I put the thinner on the brush, wipe off some of it so it's just moist, and then go ahead and brush the excess wash back off the larger panels and surfaces, working it into the gaps, the plates, and the shadows. After the enamels dry, I go back and give the model a quick dry brush with some ivory paint mixed with a little Iraqi sand just to bring out the leading edges of the wings and some of the more prominent details. And I also add in a few careful pin washes in spots where I feel that the definition could be redefined a bit. There's not a lot of specific surface detail on this model, so I go ahead and finish it off by painting the missiles gray and giving them a light gray highlight, and then I move on to do the windows. And I use my window technique for this. It's not hard to do, but it involves quite a few layers, so I'll put the link up to how to achieve this, and you can watch that video separately if you'd like. This completes the painting for the model. So then, as always, I go on to spray it with two coats of matte varnish just to give it extra levels of protection. And with that, the model is done. Though it's far from display quality, I think you'll agree that this model will work just fine on the battlefield, and it lets me get these planes on the table fast for my next game of Team Yankee. That being said, I got it done in a fairly quick time and with decent detail. Not too much detail, because after all, it's a plane, not a tank. Oh yeah! That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please stay tuned for new content twice weekly on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is your source for regular model building, miniature painting, and diorama content. If you've not yet subscribed, make sure you do, and press the bell button to receive immediate notification so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching, and until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.